So yesterday we started our sequence unit. And the first learning target that we talked about was I can list the terms of a sequence when given the general term. What did I tell you general term really means? The rule, the rule, okay? So on this first one, the a sub n equals 3n plus 2. Um, I need to find the first, second, third, and fourth term. And I denote first term by saying a sub 1, second term, a sub 2, third term, a sub 3, and so forth. So those terms are 5, 8, 11, and 14. Number 3 is a little bit more complicated, but still it's pretty easy. It would be negative 4, 5, negative 6, and 7. Are there any questions on 1 and 3? Okay, number 5 is a sub n equals negative 1 raised to n plus 1 over 2 raised to n minus 1. I, I, did, I, I did some work on that one. Um, because it's kind of a little complicated, but you see, negative 1 squared is 1, 2 to the first, 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 1 to the third would be a negative 1, 2 squared, 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 1 to the fourth would be positive 1, 2 cubed is 8 minus 1 is 7, and so forth. Any questions on that first learning target? All right, then we talked about factorial expressions. Number 17, your answer is 272. I have 17 factorial over 15 factorial. Definition of factorial is you multiply down, subtract 1 off each time. So I got 17 factorial times 16 factorial times 15 factorial. I stop at 15 factorial because I want that to cancel out. So I get 272. Number 9 is n plus 2 factorial over n factorial. All right. N plus 2. I'm going to take 1 off of that. That's n plus 1. I'm going to take 1 off that. That is n. I stop there because I can cancel those out. And then I get n plus 2, n plus 1 times n plus 1. Some of y'all might have left that like that. Please just multiply it out. Okay, please multiply that out. Boil that out. Um, we didn't talk about this yesterday, but I want to add, I'll talk to you about something. 2 factorial is 2, is it? 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. 1 factorial will be what? One. Okay, you know how we have that rule, anything raised to zero is what? One. Well, we have zero factorial, and it is accepted by mathematicians as being one, and this is the reason behind it. I want you to look at this. So if you see one factorial is equal to one, zero factorial is accepted to be one. And here's the reason. If I work these out, there's a pattern. What's 120 divided by 5? 24. 24 divided by 4 is? 6 divided by 3 is? 2 divided by 2 is 1 divided by 1 would be that's why 0 factorial is 1 okay so that also you want to know why anything raised to 0 is 1 has anybody showed you that okay here we go watch this it's a pattern these two you use a pattern to explain why how do I get from 64 to 16 I divide by what 64 divided by 4 is 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4 divided by 4 is. That works for either of all of them. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed is 27. 27 divided by 3 is. 9 divided by 3 is. 3 divided by 3 is. That's why everything's raised to 0 is 1. That's the proof for it. Okay. All right, number 11. Are we good on factorials? Okay, then we talk about this means, this is a Greek letter for sigma. You might say all that in fraternities and sororities. Sigma is a Greek letter. It's known as sigma notation or summation notation. The answer to that is 105. We're worried about numbers from 1 to 6, so I'll plug that in. Summation means sum, so I'm adding all that up. Number 13 was pretty easy. That is 60. Number 50, this is what reminded me why I need to talk about that because you got zero factorial here. From 0 to 4, so I plug 4 in. 3. Um, so, negative 1 to the 4th be positive 1. 4 factorial is 24. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 3 factorial is 6. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 factorial is 2. Negative 1 to the 1st is negative 1. Negative 1 divided by 1 is that, that's why I have a negative there. Negative 1, anything raised to 0 is 1. Regardless if it's positive or negative, 0 factorial is 1. So, 1 divided by 1 is positive 1 there. And you get 3 eighths. Number 17, we worry about from numbers from 1 to 5, including 1 to 5. And here's our expression. 
I plug five in. I plug four, three, two, one. It's kind of neat what happens here. It's a lot of work, and yes, you said, Mr. Chester, I didn't show all this work. I showed it because I thought this might give a particular problem to some people. Yes. Could you simplify the beginning? Yeah, like, yes. so if that total would be n minus 1, then it goes to x minus You could do that. Yep, you could have. I had that come up first there. All right, now, what happens here, I have 5 factorial over 5 minus 1 factorial. So 5 factorial over 4 factorial. So it ends up 4 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial over 1 factorial, 1 factorial over 0 factorial. Oh, you can learn about the math class if you're mad. I don't know. Let me go to the stack that you hang out with. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You did the right thing. I'm proud of you. You get some candy in a minute. Ah! Did he really just? He really just did that. Don't ever pull. If you get out released out of a event, don't just hang out in the hallway. I can be petty like that sometimes. All right. So we ended up 5 times 4. You see those cancel out? You see those cancel out? So it ended up being 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Even though it looked monstrous, it came out to an easy problem with 15. All right. Are there any questions on that? Okay. Turn back to your notes yesterday. Thank goodness this stuff is easy. Um, did we even, st how far did, oh, that, oh, that's a, that's a lesson. Which, we're like two note takers ahead in first period. All right, let's look here, page three. We talked about aromatic, and what do we know about aromatic? You're, are you adding or multiplying? You're adding, and you're adding by, what's that term called? Common what? Difference. And what letter represents common difference? D. How do I denote the first term, A sub? One. And why is it called common difference? How do you find that term? Take the second and do what? Subtract the what? First. Subtraction. So that's why it's called common difference. Okay. So yesterday we gave the first term and then we added this number to find the other six terms. Well, today I'm going to... Did I give you all index card yesterday? Okay. And we wrote that um, formula down. You're going to have four formulas. Two for aromatic and two for geometric. Okay. The purpose of this formula, guys, is to, okay, instead of having to write the whole sequence out to figure out what the 21st term is, you can just simply plug, plug this in right here and figure out what it is, okay? So like on number four, it wants to find the eighth term when the first term is four and your common difference is negative seven, okay? So I want to find the eighth term, so I'm going to put that down, a sub eight. What is your first term? Four. They give that to you, okay? Plus. Now, looking in this formula here, you see that little n right there? And that big n right there? They have to be the same value. So if this is 8 right here, what's that big n going to be? 8, okay? So you're going to plug 8 in. And then your common difference is negative 7. Yes. Now, a to the eighth equals four minus forty nine. So a to the 8 equals negative 45. So the 8 term of that sequence would be negative 45. Alright, now number 
five. What term? Do, let's give. Let's go number six. Let's do number six. Because we're not doing all four of these same thing. Number six. I want to find the what term? The twelfth term. So I'm gonna write a sub twelve equals my first term. The formula. The first term is negative eight plus. This goes in the parentheses, minus 1, your common difference is negative 2. So a sub 12 equals negative 8 plus 11 times negative 2. So your 12th term would be negative 30. So our first learning target was I can find an indicated term of an aromatic sequence. Indicated term, a specific term, using that formula. Are we good on that? I need a hand signal. Okay. If I give you the first term of an aromatic sequence to tell me to ask you to find the other six given the common difference, can you do that? Okay. All right, let's turn it over. The next one, we're going to find the sum. Like, I want to know what's the sum of the first hundred terms of this sequence or the sum of the first ten. That's another formula that you need to write down on your card. Now, you say, Mr. Treasurer, how will I know which one to use? This one starts with S. So when I ask you to find the sum, you use this one. When I ask you to find the in a term, you use the other one, okay? So, on number 8 there, it says find the sum of the first how many? 15. So that's how we'll put S sub 15. Of the aromatic sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, dot, 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 dot. Keeps going. So S of 15, okay, these ends are the same. So I'm going to put 15 over 2. A sub 1 means your first what? Term. So first term is 3. Now, you have three ends up here in that problem. That's 15. That has to be 15. That has to be 15. Do we know the 15th term right now? No. But how can we find the 15th term? Use that formula. We just learned it. So we have to come to the side and find the 15th term. So A sub 15, that's to be A sub 1, which is 3, plus 15 minus 1. And that is times D. They didn't tell me my common difference, but could I find it? Mm -hmm. Take your second term minus the first term. So what is it going up each time by? 3. So A sub 15 equals 3 plus 14 times 3. And that gives me 45. So that is what I'm going to plug in right there. And then I just do in parentheses times it by 7.5, and that's my answer. That's be 48 times, and I get 360. So if I added up the first 15 terms of that sequence, it will give me a sum of 360. Now, guys, you might see have problems where you might have 3, 6, 9, 12, dot, 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 45. If they give you dot, 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 45, they've given you that term. So you don't have to do this. You just put that in right there. Does that make sense? Sometimes they might do this, 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 dot, 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 and the last number of that sequence that they want you to do. Well, if that's the case, that's what you go there. You don't have to do this, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Let's do one more of these. Number nine. It says find the sum of the first 100. So S sub what? 100 equals 100 over 2, parentheses, what's your first term? 1 plus A sub 100. All right, come over and find A sub 100. 1 plus 100 minus 1. What's my common difference here? 2. That's 199, so that's going to give me 50. 100 divided by 2 is 50. 
1 plus 199, that's 200. So that's going to be 10,000. It's my sum of the first 100 terms. Test pretty easy if you have this note card. Don't lose your note card because I'm not going to write the formulas on on board. All right, are we good with it? How to find the term and the sum of the aromatic? Okay, turn to page five. We're going to start talking about geometric. And what do we do in geometric? We add or multiply? Multiply. 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 Okay, so what we add by an aromatic is called common difference. Because we have to subtract to find it, don't we? So if we do a multiplication, how do we find it? We're going to have to do what? Divide. So you said, Mr. is it called the common quotient? Not quite, no. But it's called the common ratio. So common difference is a D. Common ratio is an R. You said, why is it called a ratio? Do you remember back in middle school when you had to write ratios like two dogs to three cats or something? And you could write it as like two over three? Well, isn't the fraction bar mean division? So that's why they use ratio, okay? That's the R. So right here it says write the first six terms of each geometric sequence. What's my first term? Six. How will I get my second term? Multiply by what? So that's going to give me two. And then I'm going to say two times one-third, which is two-thirds. Two-thirds times one-third is two-ninths. Two-ninths times one-third is two-twenty-sevenths. And the final is 2 over 81. So I multiplied each term by that one-third, that common ratio. It is signified by R, isn't it, Mr. Hall? Number two. My first term is one-half. So A sub 1 is one-half. Then I'm going to multiply one-half by what? Negative one half, so it's going to be negative what? One fourth. A negative times a positive. That's going to be um, one eighth. Okay, so you got one half times a negative, be negative one fourth, a negative times a negative, be a positive. And then this is going to be negative one sixteenth. Then positive 132, and then negative 164th. Those would be my terms of that sequence. Y'all do number three. Your first term is 3. What's your second term? 6. 6. Next time? 12. What is it? 12. 12. Then? 24. Then? 26. Very good. You get that. It's a real easy. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Last thing we'll do, number 4, and call it a day. Now you want to know how to find a term of a geometric. We found a term of aromat. Write that formula. And you said, Mr. Judge, how am I know which formula is what? Okay, in aromatic you have the D. In geometric you have the R, okay, the common ratio. So write that um, formula down. So we want to find on this first one the eighth term of that geometric. A sub 1 is the first. Your common ratio is negative 2 raised to, these ends are the same, 8 minus 1. So negative 4 times negative 2 raised to the 7th. And I get 5, 12. These ends after you find an eight term, so eight goes there and eight goes there, your first term, your R, is your common ratio, negative two. 
and we're going to pick up on there on Tuesday. Remember, we're going to class about 15 minutes more. I don't know how much more we would do. We might just go with some homework. So work your homework is 4 through 32, even page 9. Yeah. What Okay, on number eight, guys, on number eight on your homework, there's one that says 16 factorial over 2 factorial, 4 factorial. That 4 should be a 14, okay? Because you, you're going to see it. You're going to notice it when you get to it. So let that 4 be a 14 on number eight. Is that eight? Oh, yes. Yeah. Has anybody ever showed you about the zero exponents why it was one or is that first? It's just a pattern. 